I visit Fort, Fort, what is it called? Fort York Muse Museum. Shows a lot of, about the history of what happened during the, uh, the War of 1812 and a lot of things prior to this. So mostly 18th, 19th century. Uh, and I love it, 10 out of 10. My name is Noah, I'm nine years old and I'm from Canada. My name is Aaron, I'm 13 years old. I was born here in Canada and my parents are from Central America. Imagine what it would be like to be from 1800 and then you got transported to the 2000s. I think the world will be a lot different than well, In the past 150 years, we've advanced so much. Invention of the light bulb, uh, electricity being used mainstream everywhere, planes, cars, streets, phones. Canada has an amazingly rich history. And what we're going to be focusing in on right now is the history, not only of Fort York, but of the land, because it's all part of the, of the history of this space, right? April 27th, uh, well, actually, technically April 26th, 1813, something like uh, 2,500 soldiers and sail American soldiers and sailors uh, came across the lake. They landed uh, by early morning, April 27th, they landed west of here. And so as soon as the Americans were able to get on shore, it was basically just a sweep. They were able to land 1,700 soldiers thereabouts, and that was against up to maybe 900 or so of the defenders of this area. Because when they told me that there was indigenous people that fought uh, for, for this country, I was a bit surprised and taken aback because I, I didn't, they didn't teach me that in school. These people are equals to, for example, the, the white people that may have fought in the war, so they definitely should be honored and definitely should be talked about more. Yeah. Let's have a look at how people lived when they were in Fort York. So, of course, in a fort like this, we had soldiers, but guess what? Not just soldiers. Soldiers and their families, wives and children lived here as well. We have Pioneer Village. Yeah, just same, ah, same age. So I'm going to go on the other side here. We've been outside, and now we're on the inside. We can see how people lived. Now, this room is called the Soldier's Barrack Room. How many people would live in this room? 24. 25. Not bad, 32. Oh, wow. So there we go. So there's our, there's our soldier's berth or bunk. Beautiful. So now, can you imagine wearing all of that clothing? For me, it was. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm just standing outside. <laughs> So today, this is basically the fort that we're in today, but remember I said we're missing some buildings. Let's go upstairs and have a look at a couple of things I think you might find interesting. And so the, the key thing to understand is that people of African origin have really been in this part of the world since the 1500s and have actually contributed substantially to the defense of this part of the world that we now enjoy as our, as our home. And that includes people like Richard Pierpoint, who are a part of the, the, uh, the core, the color core as well. Uh, and we're a key in, during the American Revolution, the War of 1812. This idea of like the colored corpse was actually suggested by like Richard Pierpoint. I think he mentioned that. So he was a former enslaved person who fought during the American Revolution. Why do you think he came up with the idea? Like, why do you think he suggested it? Former slave, and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna fight in this like British American War to fend off the Americans. Mm, so he can help the land. I think Richard wanted unity, but it ended up being used, be, being used as a tool for segregation. And those, uh, yes, absolutely, those are, those are scalpels and queens. item because uh, the soldiers or the people that fought here used to wear this. It's so, it's so big on me. Uh, these are the drumsticks of the drummers that are part of the uh, army. I guess I picked them up because I used to, I used to be a drummer back when I was younger, and I just like these drumsticks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>